So here we are on the far side of the shop, and I figure what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to mount a bracket at the top there to hold the mass pipe. And I'm going to also have to put a bracket right down here on the bottom, so I'll probably have to drill into the foundation there. And then that'll allow me to put a hinge down here, and I can hinge the pipe up to the bracket on the top. So I'm going to have to go get some steel, I'll probably have to go get some angle iron, and I'll have to mount it to the side of the shop and mount something that comes out past the gutter that the pipe can actually slide into as I tilt the pipe upwards, right? Because that's a lot of pipe that's going to be moved up and down. Then, of course, down here on the foundation, I'll drill a bunch of holes here and put some concrete anchors in and then have something that comes out here with a hinge so that I can lay the pipe down. So I'll get this started and I'll be back and I'll show you some of the process. I have some of the siding removed at the top side of the shop here so I can mount a piece of angle iron up there. I had to stop with the project for a while because our weather was so bad, but like a light switch, now it's 31 outside. So that's what it does here. So anyways, let's take a look at what's happening here and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. So I got to climb the ladder here, pardon the shaky camera. All right. So you can see here, I have little S's written down and that's where the studs are. And what I'm going to do is mount a piece of angle iron here. So it'll go all along here and it'll be mounted all the way along. So with you know, very large screws screwed into the studs. And then what I'm going to do is take some, oh, I don't know, cold rolled or something like that. I think I might have some re-rod or something like that in the shop. And I'm gonna make like a tripod structure that's gonna go out to the edge of the gutter here. And there'll be a cup like so that sticks out and then the mast will slide up into that cup and then I can lock the cup so I'll have a bolt that goes through the end of the cup, not through the mast, because I don't want to weaken the mast. And then, after that's done, what I can do is set the mast up. So I have a short piece of mast. I've only welded two pieces together on, on one chunk of mast. Because once you put two or three, maybe even four, I'd say two's the limit. So three the bottom starts to kick out when you prop it up because there's just so much mast hanging out the opposite direction. So I'll stand that mast up and then what I can do is I can get everything square and uh, make sure it's straight up and down. And at that point I can mark down there where I'm going to start making the bracketry for the bottom with a hinge. The brackets coming together. This is the piece of angle iron that was screwed to the wall and here is some rebar. And that's welded to this little piece of angle iron right here. And the reason that this is welded to just this small piece is this is going to be welded to a, a much larger piece, which is going to hold the mass, which is right here. And the reason that I've done that is because I don't know if the wall is perfectly straight. And if I make this thing, you know, absolutely square and perfectly straight and mount it to the wall and the wall's a little crooked or something like that, then of course this thing here is going to be holding the mast, right? This is going to be welded to this. So if this thing is crooked, in any way, shape, or form, you know, the mast won't stand straight up and down. It'll, you know, either be bent over to one side or whatever. So this all has to be sized and tack welded in place. And then what I'll do is I'll just weld this to the back side of this in the shop here once it's tack welded and everything is, I guess you could say, uh, sized up on the wall. So that's where I am right now. So quite a bit of work just to do all this measurement, make sure that this thing is not going to touch or be, you know, right next to the gutter and give myself some space to get the U-clamps in to hold the mast. So this here will be U-clamped or U-bolts or whatever you want to call those things. They look like muffler clamps. Anyways, this thing will, uh, you know, the, the arch will go past here and then the, the two threaded portions will be on the other side and then the little plate will come on and I can fasten this on both sides. And that will hold the masting extremely tight. I have the pole standing up now and as you can see on the top here I've got that piece of angle iron fastened to it just loosely with those u-clamps that's about as far as that lens zooms in and I've got a bungee cord holding it up against that so what I'm going to do now is lift this pole up and just move it around and I'm going to have a level on here a magnetic level and I'll move it around and I'll make sure that this is basically perfectly up and down if you want to call it that so it's perfectly square it's not crooked it's not leaning or anything like that 
and that bungee cord at the top will hold the pole against the bracket so that it won't come away because when this is standing straight up and down right it's basically just gonna you know well, it'll be very loose at the top right so the bungee cord will hold it against that bracket and that way I can size things up and see how close I actually am with this you know screwed to the side of the shop like this all right so that's what we're looking at here and slide this around here all right and just to be sure we'll go to this side and sure we'll go to that side so that's what we're looking at now if you look at the top here i hope i can get this in here i might have to go to this side here because of the sun if you look at the bottom there i'll try and zoom this in as far as i can if you look at the bottom there you can see how far out that actually is let's see if we can get this here hard to see the, the viewfinder so right there you can see how far out the second bracket is from the first one so if i would have welded that up perfectly straight you can see that it would have affected the pole and that's why it's so incredibly important to tack weld this stuff so there we go it's all set up this is just in the dirt right now let's uh, zoom this back out this is just in the dirt right now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this where this is, so I'll probably just push some long screws in the ground just to give it me a general idea of where the pole was sitting, and then I'll know how far to extend the bracket out and then put a plate in there. And then, of course, I'll set the pole back on it again and get everything perfectly straight, and then I'll tack weld that as well. The upper bracket is now finished and installed. I painted it with some rattle can paint just to stop it from rusting. And I have the siding back on, and everything is all complete up there. So now the next step is creating the bracketry down here with a hinge for the masting. And I still have my little markers down here. My three little screws so the pipe fit right in here. So I know that that'll be roughly the area that I have to build out from. So I'll probably drill some holes in the wall, put some angle iron on there and make a frame. And get started with that. Amazing amount of work to just put up a piece of mast. And again, this will have to be done all over again on the front side of the house. But I'm happy with that. That turned out extremely well. That worked out very, very well. I have some spare steel kicking about. It's a little bit rusty, but I'll end up cleaning it up. And this is the stuff that's going to be attached to the side of the structure here as the antenna base or the masting base. I also have some concrete blocks that I picked up and I have a piece of mast sticking out of one. So I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the base, and I think I'm coming to, a, coming to a pretty decent plan. So I'll get some of this put together, maybe tack welded, and I'll show you what I'm up to. I have the piece of angle iron drilled, so I've drilled five holes in the angle iron. So a hole here, a hole here, one in the center, and two other holes. And then what I'm going to do is put a level on this and get this perfectly level. So I can move this around right now, as you can see, right? So screws a little or the bolts a little bit tight here so I've drilled a hole in the concrete already so I can move this around like so and I can get everything you know perfectly level and then at that time what I'm gonna do is just mark this with a felt so I'll go in these little holes here and mark this with a felt and here as well and then mark the concrete and then I'll drill out those holes once everything is perfectly level the angle iron is now mounted to the wall and as you can see down here it's level so drilling those holes in the wall is a real pain just because there's no leverage for the hammer drill down here and then of course there's this concrete is full of nice little polished rocks and it hits a polished rock every now and then and you just sit there and sit there and sit there so what i actually did is i took a piece of that ready rod and i would hammer it into the ground like this and then use it as a pry bar on the back side of the drill to push the drill in to give me a little bit more leverage and that really helped
the bracketry is coming along quite well. So that was the area there that I just welded. And that's pretty much it for this. Now I need to go put this thing up against the side of the shop here or the new lab and mount everything and get everything square and flush so everything is level. All right, I have this thing set up so I can tack weld this and bring it inside and continue. So you can see it's level and it's level on this plane here as well as that one over there. And I've just got some vice grips with some, you know, basically flat stock and angle iron over there holding it up. So what I would do is I would just push this down until I get it level and then squeeze the clamps until everything is perfect and I went back and forth and back and forth. So now I just need to tack weld this onto this bracket right here and then I need to make the actual stands for this area. So that is the next step. The bracket's installed on the wall and I've just, I guess you could say tack welded it. A little bit more than tack welding I would imagine. And what I've done is I've taken these concrete, basically post holders, and I have some angle iron that perfectly fits into the actual hole. So when you hammer the angle iron down into the hole, it's nice and tight and uh, it makes a, a really good friction fit. So those are into the holes of the post. And what I'm going to do is put a limit stop here. So I'll, I'll weld a flat piece of flat uh, steel right in here. And I'll do the same with the other one. And then I'll go onto the bottom side of the block and weld a flat piece there as well. So this here cannot, you know, pull out or push in. And it's perfectly level right now. Everything is, is coming together very, very well. So I've drilled and tapped this here and I, I put a, a bolt through here so I can disassemble this if I ever want to take this off the wall. You know, I was thinking of welding this here, but then if I ever want to move this or if I have to, you know, do something to service it, who knows what the future brings, right? I want to be able to, to get this thing apart. So it's the end of yet another day. This has been another all day project. And next, we'll put the pole up. So I'll weld in a, a, a strut, or I guess you could say another support in here with the hinge on it. And then we'll bring the pole up on it. And that should work out very well. So stay tuned for part three coming up. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you want to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs and a whole bunch of just other random circuits, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll also pin the link right at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, It'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.